Now, two years later, tell us about the pressing of, of the charges, because I recall you mentioning you actually had relatives here in your home yes. on the day that this came up. Yes. As I had already told you, we had no indication of timescales at all, so they just rolled on and on. The apartment would ring them up at reasonably regular intervals. When are you going to either do something or drop it? We could never get a, an answer out of them. Again, apparently, one of their techniques is not to let you know anything because it ups the ante. And, yeah. um, and the more nervous people feel, the more they're likely to um, drop themselves in it. Okay. So, finally got this phone call, not from the police, from my solicitor, saying they're coming to Hatfield Police Station um, Saturday morning and you are invited to attend. Invited? Yes. And I said to him, I said, what happens if I don't feel like they're invite? He said, well in that case they'll come to the house, arrest you and take you anyway. Uh -huh. So it's one of these invites that you can't refuse. Uh -huh. And at the time we had um, some relatives of staying with us. Uh, they were down for three or four days. Um, <coughs> and they knew nothing about any of this. I mean, they didn't officially know that we're a gay couple. Oh. Uh, because, as I said, he's a private person. He doesn't tell his relatives everything. Uh, they're separated by distance as much as anything, so there's almost not the need to. And um, so we're trying to look all happy and jolly with his friends here, relatives here. While at the same time I'm having to make an excuse as to why I need to disappear off to the, f uh, the nearby town. Um, you know, to, I'll be back in an hour or two possibly, I'm not quite sure at the moment. Um, I can't remember what excuse I made, probably something about a friend that is in a bit of trouble and needs a help with that. So, <coughs> disappear from here. Um, you go over to the police station. They read you the charge sheet, they take your fingerprints, they do your photographs, front on, and all the neck age, you see, side on, <laughs> yeah. and um, all that. And you know, that made me feel terrible, because I'd always been what I consider a very law-abiding citizen. I'd always wanted to serve on a jury and things like that. I had a, a great sense of public responsibility and... Um, so on. Um, so to actually be in the criminal process now, being a criminal, and with each charge they read out, they'd say, have you got any comment? So I'd make a comment. Um, so the whole process took about an hour, hour and a half. Um, there was still no idea as to exactly when anything next would happen, because then it's down to the um, Crown Prosecution Service, whether they bring charges. So although they've um, charged you with something, it still has to then be submitted to the CPS okay. to see if they think there's enough evidence there for you to go to court, whether the police have a reasonable chance of winning or not. Because obviously, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if, if they don't stand any chance of winning, it's a waste of public money to yeah. bring the case. Yeah. So that was that. And then I came back here. Um, and I had to be all happy and jolly again. Um, it was a strain, shall we say. And of course, I just wanted to know what had happened. And I couldn't tell him until they'd left, which was sure. like two days later. Oh. Which we did try the bit of <coughs> quiet chat upstairs, but it's not the same as a proper open discussion. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it was fraught. And I was really pissed off the fact that we waited two years to actually bug it up something that we were doing, you know. Perhaps that was selfish on my part, because they do work hard. <laughs> so it was horrible. That was the Saturday. Um, on the Tuesday, I went into work on Monday, nothing was said. On the Tuesday, I was called up to an office upstairs. Um, and the chap said, have you read today's papers? I said, no. I don't get the papers, didn't bother with the papers. 
<coughs> partly for the aforesaid reasons about the press and so on. Um, not about me in particular, but about the press wasn't worth reading a lot of it. <coughs> so I said, no, I'm not sitting there. And he said, well, it says here in one of the papers, um, famous scientist arrested. No. Well, for a start, there was no fame involved. <laughs> Nobody knew who I was. But my name was in the paper, and it was in virtually all of the um, tabloids and in the broadsheets. All of us had been charged. Apparently, we all got charged pretty much over the same weekend, mm. day or two. <coughs> and the next instruction was um, to go home. So um, I was sent home, basically. <coughs> now, I'd been there, what, eight, ten years or something? Worked, as I told you before, worked myself into a good position, was good at my job. Um, and then it just sort of stopped, like instantly. And then to make matters even more galling, um, the press, as soon as they found out where I worked, because you'll see it in all of the newspaper cuttings and things, you know, uh, aerospace scientist and this, that and the other. <coughs> um, they were asked things like, um, did I have access to any official documents and so on and they said no well that was a barefaced lie because I, not only a, like every other employee I'd signed the official secrets act when I went there because <coughs> it was missile systems uh, we didn't sign that at the aircraft company because there's nothing yeah. you know of national security there um, but I signed it up there so that was a lie for a start but the, more importantly um, yes I had access to secret documents because I had my own security clearance by virtue of my position yeah. and I had a folder that I could request and book documents in and out to the people that work for me. Um, <clears throat> that's why I think they would have gone to the workplace earlier. So they denied that and to make that as also worse, having been there that time, there wasn't a single word of thanks uh, from uh, the company officially at all. Just nothing, you know, not a, well, we're sorry, and, you know, they were just covering their asses, basically, as big companies tend to do in these circumstances. So they let you go? Oh, they didn't just let me go, they heaved me out the door. <laughs> okay. Um, I managed to negotiate a sort of, um, a sort of settlement of some sort for, um, I mean, in theory, I should have had two months full paid notice plus some compensation of some sort. So I managed to negotiate something, but, um, a few years later, when I tried to get references from the um, personnel department mm. from um, moving your life on a bit, I said, oh, I can't find you. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> you know, so yeah, well, incredible. I've been uh, obliterated from their existence, I suppose. Um, yeah, incredible. Anyway, um, so that was the that was the job gone. Uh, so then it was a matter of just sitting around at home, um, waiting to find out when there was going to be a trial and what would go on. Oh, we had obviously, um, at that time, we then contacted solicitors and people like that. But I think I was, no, that's not, that's a lie. I'm lying, honestly, James. We, we got a solicitor at the time we were raided, just after, right. because they said, we suggest you get a solicitor. Who is your solicitor, they said to me. That's right, Baker said that. I said, I've no idea. We don't need solicitors. We never use solicitors, you know. We, have no need for it's not as though um, we're habitual criminals who have the solicitor coming to tea. Yeah, um, we hadn't got a solicitor, so I looked in the gay press and found people that de dealt with sort of the sex life side of prosecutions and used one of them. So that's how I found the solicitor. Wow. Uh, and then once the charges were brought, of course, then it was into barristers and uh, people like that. I don't know if you. Your listeners and viewers know the, um, well, your listeners and viewers association, really, I'd like to call it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, whether they know the system over here, I'm not sure what it is where you are, but um, solicitors can ask you all the questions and support your case, but they're not allowed to talk in court. Oh, I they're see. They're not high enough up. I you see. have to be a barrister, which is like a couple of steps up, to oh. actually chat to our learned judges. Oh. That's them what wear the fetish gear. You know, the long oh, curly wings oh, and oh, things, oh. yes. So that's where we were um, the day the charges were brought. Yeah, not a good day. 
With what were you charged at that time? Um, well, I was, well, actually it took a couple of months for the charges to arrive in print. I mean, this was... Um, I'm trying to think what year we got to by now. We got to 89, I think. Yes, about 89, something like that. And it took a while for them to arrive. Um, I've actually got them, the charges listed here. I mean, I can read them out. If I read them, I'd need to um, just put in A, B and C for people's names. Sure. All right. So we see how it goes. Yeah, I um, think we can do that. Uh, there's some interesting little odds and ends about some of them. I won't bother with every word, <coughs> but one, on diverse days, between the first day of January 78 and 17th of November 87, conspired together with A, B, C, D, E and others to assault each other and other persons who could be induced to join them, thereby occasioning each other and the aforesaid other persons actual bodily harm. Um, so the important word there is conspire. Mm -hmm. Because conspiracy, um, as I think we may have covered, has to be heard in a Crown Court. You oh. can't hear a conspiracy charge in a Magistrate's Court. It has to go hmm. into a Crown Court, which is okay. you know, like the top tier. Yeah. So that was one. Uh, on another one, on the day before 17th November, um, assaulted one of the other defendants, thereby occasioning him actual bodily harm, as shown on videotape number so-and-so, contrary to section 47 of Offences Against the Person Act. Okay. And my reply was, I don't see how you can assault somebody with their consent, because the consent, while not in writing or verbal, was there by the fact that they, that we did all these things and that nobody said, don't do it. Right. You know, and... Um, as I'm sure you're well aware within the gay SM world, if you're, if you're concerned about that aspect, you have safe words and, yes. and ways of stopping things. Yes. Um, right, and that was another one. And another one was, um, again, they use slightly different words here. Before 17th November, at an address in Hampstead, counselled and procured, aided and abetted one of the defendants to assault one of the others. That was the one with the spiral staircase ah. I mentioned, you see. And then another one, uh, same date. Uh, this was the one that turned out to be, from my point of view, what they considered the most serious. This is the one that ended up with the cutting and things, which sounds terrible, especially if you listen to Mr. Haynes, who I'll come on to later. Okay. Um, again, on the same days, uh, aided and abetted one of the defendants to unlawfully wound someone else with intent to do grievous bodily harm as shown on my now notorious videotape, the one that apparently started this whole thing off, um, contrary to um, section 18 of some person's act. And my reply to all of these was the same, that I don't see how you could have assaulted someone if they consented yes. to it. And, um, oh, what's this one? There's another one here. Uh, oh, this is, uh, this is uh, more of a sort of um, corporal punishment type one. As I said, I knew some people went up towards um, Shropshire Way, where some of them were. I only ever went once. <laughs> and um, this, it was an assault occasioned an assault upon a man known as John, causing actual bodily harm. Well, that was John who wore a kilt, leaned over the balcony of this tower, lifted his kilt and we all whacked it one as hard as we could with belts. And as his learned judge said, we could see what state Jaggard was in. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? That means I had a stiffy. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, and oh. as you know, that is I mean, <clears throat> pretty much the end of the world. Yeah. For straight people to have gay people with erections because they're whacking someone. Yeah. But I'd have had been just the same if I hadn't been whacking people. But I was just watching. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those jobs almost yeah. since I was about 11. So, 
you can't control them. I mean, they ask any bloke, you know, there are times when they're totally out of control, these things. Right, that was that. So that was one in the tower. And I said I wasn't aware of that particular charge anyway. And then there's another one that I um, unlawfully, unlawfully and maliciously wounded Colin Lasky, one of our yes. European court chaps, um, here. So, again, the final reply, I don't see how I can be maliciously wounding someone when I have their consent and they have these things done to them before and by others also with their consent. In other words, they've done these sort of, all of us have done these sort of things before. Yes. Um, so that was the main charges. Um, one of the local newspapers um, said there were loads of charges and that's when, as soon as the charges were in the public domain, that's when the aggravation from press and, yeah. and so on started. Yeah. Um, we did have a couple of reporters turn up from the Nationals, um, but essentially we told them to go away. All words to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. Did they keep hounding you? <coughs> no. Um, I think they got the idea that they wouldn't be getting anywhere quite quickly, so what's the point? Um, the only place we got really a what I'd call more aggro than is warranted um, is by um, press photographers. I mean, photographers as a breed are pretty bloody awful, aren't they? And it was by press photographers en route from like the tube stations to the uh, to the court. Uh, uh, okay. And they were all around. And what m made that ironic as well? We were in court charged with lots of woundings and assaults. One of the poor buggers was um, knocked over by a pressman and um, broke his wrist. Oh my gosh. Uh, and as um, we pointed out, the photographer wasn't charged with an assault. But the bloke was more wounded than anything we'd ever done in any of our stuff. Incredible. You know, so that was the situation there. I might be smiling a bit, but actually it was all horrible. Yeah. Um, I had people unannounced turn up who wanted some SM from me. Oh my You know, gosh. Um, if uh, a couple of people wrote letters, mm. um, I do this and that, and I was sort of nearly tempted to reply, but as one of my straight friends said, he said, Roland, you would be an idiot if you replied to these, because yeah. you, first you don't know who they are. That's right. And second, if they did get out into the public domain, at this time especially, yeah. having been charged, you know, you've got no case. You're absolutely right on so, that. So, I deferred to his wise opinion, um, and I just kept all these people at arm's length. All I did with the ones at the door, I said, just go and um, look in the local, look in gay papers and look at the adverts, you'll find somebody, you know. So nobody was entertained here in the house at all. It was just, yeah. would be ridiculous. Not only that, would just absolutely wouldn't have been in a mental state to ever do it. Yeah, um, that's true. I mean, I still am and not really, I couldn't run an SM relationship now. Um, yeah. No, I don't have the oomph to do it other than these days or the inclination and I still have the thought of the back of my mind that this could all go pear shaped again. So it pretty much wrecked me, that side of my life completely. Uh, and it takes a lot when you are the person that that is. Because what they're saying is you are a bad person. Um, you are not of good character, yeah. which is also means when you get convicted, which upset me. Um, and that no, us, the system, don't like you being you. You have to be what we want you to be. Yeah. You know, so that's that side of it. That's what happened just after the charging.